Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet everyone here. And today I'm going to talk about uh, virtual tables, uh, one of the sources of data that we could use in Power Apps, we could use in uh, Copilot, we could use in Fabric, and how we can manage data without bringing in to Power Platform and uh, benefit out of uh, this data sort of, uh, capability that we have in Power Platform. So today, as part of our agenda, we're going to look at what are virtual tables, what are the current feature offerings that we have, and what are the different use cases, and I will also do a live demo. And so uh, feel free to, if you have any questions, let me know, uh, but I will try to fit in uh, within this time uh, and try to cover all the features possible within this time. So as you can uh, see that uh, virtual tables are basically an a metadata of uh, external data sources, and it's a mirror image of that in Power Platform. And we virtual tables pull data at runtime. And this is one of the biggest advantage of virtual tables is that the data can still reside in external source, and Dataverse in Power Platform acts as a conduit for bringing or mirroring that data in um, in your Power Power Apps or in your uh, virtual copilot scenarios or in fabric in runtime. So it's basically an abstraction of the external data sources. Uh, you, as in this example, you, you the SQL, SharePoint, Azure, these are all you can uh, virtualize it uh, into uh, uh, the uh, power platform in, in Dataverse. What are the capabilities we have in virtual tables? So. Uh, today, as part of uh, our virtual table offerings, out of the box, we have SQL connectors, we have Oracle connectors, Snowflake, and many other uh, connectors that are there, which can, which you can use to virtualize the SOA data, which is an external source, into uh, Dataverse. But you can also build your own connector, and you can build your own custom virtual connector provider, and uh, bring data of your own choice into Dataverse. When I say bring your data, just bring the metadata of your choice into Dataverse, um, but the data still remains in the external source. This is primarily very useful if you have a SQL database or an Oracle database with large sets of volumes of data and you don't want to bring in uh, these large volumes of data into Dataverse. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to keep the uh, data in the source but still go ahead and uh, create a metadata of that virtual source in uh, Dataverse and bring them in. But on top of that, uh, some of the key benefits and features of uh, virtual tables is the ability to create relationship. So the power of Dataverse where you can build, uh, you, you can create different tables and create relationship between these tables is extended to virtual tables as well. So you can create relationship between a virtual table and a Dataverse native table or virtual table to another virtual table. So it, it can be two different sources. Uh, that could be a SQL uh, database um, and or an Oracle, and you wanted to create a relationship in Dataverse, and it is possible today. And of course, uh, you can create a, a, a relationship between a Dataverse table and virtual table. Uh, if time permits, I'll try to see if I can show all the three, uh, but certainly at least one uh, aspect of it, I can cover it today. And of course, uh, along with uh, creating these relationships, you want to be able to filter and uh, look up for uh, the data using the virtual table column or the native table column. And so those capabilities are also enabled as part of this uh, virtual table capability which also we will try to see today uh, as to how you can apply filters and also how we can uh, uh, sort by uh, columns uh, using uh, native tables uh, on uh, virtual tables. Uh, there are some classic uh, use cases which uh, uh, we support. Some of our customers use uh, uh, scenarios where the data especially in the insurance industry, the data claims uh, related in, uh, information resides in a, a SQL or um, Oracle uh, database, but uh, 
the native data dataverse contains the information about the customer, the policyholder, and then they apply filter and search based on that. And the app uh, is, sits on top of this uh, virtual tables. Um, there is a, a video here, but instead I would switch to a live demo and I will show you how we can uh, uh, create virtual tables and and also create relationship uh, between virtual tables and the data was native tables. So let me share uh, that part of it. So let me quickly explain us uh, what the base here is. Um, so I have uh, two data sets. So let me, uh, there is a retail store that I've created. It contains the store number, uh, the different store names, and uh, what it has uh, in terms of where it is located and the store contact information. But I also have another uh, table, which is uh, basically in a SharePoint uh, in this example. And uh, the SharePoint has the inventory details about uh, each of these stores, what products they have, and who is the manager, and what the contact information, and things like that. And so what I am planning to do is now first uh, create a virtual table. So let me go ahead and create a virtual table. And I already have a database native table. Uh, what I'm planning to do now is virtualize the um, uh, SharePoint data into uh, uh, Dataverse. So let me, uh, so I clicked on create virtual table, I choose a source, and then uh, I add, uh, the, I choose the location where the data is located. And I know because I know I, where it is, I chose uh, the communication site. And then it gives me all the options, uh, all the lists that are available uh, within the SharePoint. And in this uh, instance, I have I wanted the store manager details, so I'm choosing store manager details to be virtualized in uh, Dataverse. Uh, it goes and brings in all the columns uh, that are there in uh, the uh, list, but it also creates additional columns uh, as part of a system uh, requirement, uh, and there are a few more tables. And it it identifies which column to be a primary key. If you wanted to change it. Uh, we can change it, uh, but it, when I look at it, uh, everything seems right. The ID should be the primary key. It's a unique value in that uh, list, and I, I know that. And everything else seems right, and so now I, I just move forward. But if there is any reason you wanted to go and modify it, change it, you always go, you have, have options to go back, or you can uh, once again click on edit configuration table to change the uh, primary column and things like that. Or if you want to choose a different list, you can go click the choose different list to change the entire uh, list or location or choose a different uh, list. All that option is available. And now it look, looks good, so I'm going to say finish. In the next few seconds, it is going to create a table in uh, Dataverse. Um, but I've already created this table, so I'm going to just go, uh, maybe I'll go. I'll show this uh, table here. Um, so I have the store manager details already created. It is uh, a virtual table, and you can see that it has all the uh, data uh, available. And now the next step in this process is to create a relationship. And so uh, when you uh, click on this table, uh, let's see if this is also created. Uh, so when you click on this relationship, uh, you can go ahead and create a relationship. And in this case, you can create many to one, one to many, or many to many relationship. And this is a, a, a native table, and we are going to create a relationship between native table and a virtual table. In the interest of time, I had already created a relationship. So this is how the relationship looks like. So I have created a relationship between the native table and the virtual table store manage details, and it shows uh, what the column is that I wanted it to be referenced in the native table. And so that's how the relationship is built now, and and we save it. Uh, and to view how this uh, all this data come together, we can go ahead and look at uh, views. So let's uh, go ahead and create a new view. 
So let me call it as a store manager view. And then I say create. OK, so as you can see, uh, it has already created a few columns that, are, uh, that have come in. Uh, but if I wanted to add store manager details, this is the lookup column. And so as you this is the uh, retail store and I have added uh, the lookup column store manager details that we just uh, added into the virtual table. And then I'm going to look for the related table, which is the virtual table here. And I want to add the store manager, uh, manager contact, and maybe manager email. And because we already created the relationship successfully, the data was native table is now connected to the virtual table and it pulls in all the information in runtime. And so for each of the stores, it knows what the manager is and who the contact is and their uh, corresponding email. So I can either uh, sort by store number. Uh, this would, this would uh, sort um, uh, those by store number, as you can see, you know, uh, it sorted the store number. But or if I want to filter it, and so I can apply filter on the uh, uh, so maybe I uh, uh, on the co columns and say uh, maybe I want to look at a store. Yes, sorry, st001. 001, and I apply, and I can see for this Bellevue store the. Uh, email is Bellevue Corp, and of course, uh, the corresponding information about the store manager, which is coming in from a uh, uh, virtual table. Or in this example, it's basically coming from SharePoint list, and we are basically virtualizing it. In the interest of time, what I will do then, though, is that um, I will uh, once again uh, share uh, 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 one more uh, video, and that might be really quick. So uh, we saw how we can virtualize these uh, data in uh, in Dataverse, but we can also uh, create a, a relationship with uh, connect to Fabric, and that is one of the beauty of virtual tables. And so this uh, video will quickly show you uh, how uh, you can create that uh, relationship. So. Uh, it's uh, straight. Um, you choose the table from uh, Dataverse and say you wanted to be connected to uh, Fabric and create a connection using the process. It, it the system automatically creates a copy of your uh, virtual table in uh, Fabric, and the data is available in Fabric as a virtual data for you to go and build reports on top of uh, Fabric. Uh, some of the use cases, as you can see, is uh, from a business intelligence analytics pers perspective, uh, you can uh, connect to Fabric and create uh, various KPIs. And using Copilot, you can create uh, KPI-driven alerts and, uh, and, and actions uh, for uh, using virtual tables. Uh, the other obvious example is the uh, data lakes and warehouses. You can build app to maintain. So if you have data in Fabric, you can virtualize fabric data into a uh, power platform and create model driven app or a, or a canvas app on top of that data. And that is also possible. Uh, one of the classic example is the uh, budget planning and forecasting the data available in uh, data warehouse or in fabric. And you can go and build these uh, uh, apps on, uh, on top of that. And then, of course, the cloud integration. If the data is uh, elsewhere and you have uh, data in uh, another cloud server, uh, you can virtualize that data without copying the data into Dataverse and still build apps. And you can also build Copilot uh, agent applications on top of that and, um, and, and also uh, create an uh, actionable uh, workflow, Power Automate flow using that data. And that kind of uh, concludes uh, my uh, part of the uh, demo.